those of you who are joining us on Instagram Live and on the Zoom Live who don't know Josh, Josh, do you want to just give us like the tweet size cliff notes of like, who are you and what on earth is this America Josh thing? Sure. So I am America Josh. Uh, I moved to New York three years ago. And when I got here, I realized that there was nothing really set up in the way of structured uh, information for uh, people that have just arrived in the city or arrived in the US. And I thought, wouldn't it be handy if there was something out there that had all the information that basically people on Facebook groups are asking over and over again, wouldn't it be handy if there was something that uh, brought it all into one spot and got built a bit of a community around that? Uh, and suddenly America Josh was formed. It was, to be completely honest, uh, a bit of a side hustle. And it's, as you do in New York, you know, everyone's got three different jobs and they're doing 10 Everyone's different things. So <laughs> Exactly. So this was mine. Uh, and I yeah, realized quickly that there were lots of people that were going through the same thing that I was going through and asking the same questions and started writing blogs and started sort of collaborating with different groups and different companies and different people to try and get all that information in one spot. And yeah, it's turned into a community of right now about three and a half thousand people all across the United States. Started in New York, so I'm in New York, obviously it's centered there, but it's started to really expand to down the coast and across to the West Coast. And it's now a community and a website that all sort of feeds into a, a site full of tips, tricks, stories, right. and it's trying to soften the blow when you land, basically. Very cool. So what we're going to be chatting about today, we've got about 15 minutes together this morning and I want everyone to feel free on Instagram and on Zoom as well to send through your questions. What we thought we'd focus on today is really community building and how do you build a community? So Josh moved to America, didn't really know anyone. How has he built that up to three and a half thousand people? At Pep Talk Her, we've got about 35,000 women globally now in the community, I think it is. And like, so we're just going to talk a little bit about like, how did we build that community? How did that happen? How do you maintain community? Because I feel like right now with everything going on, it's really interesting that like, obviously the economy um, is in a lot of trouble, but it's, it's interesting that people are craving community and connection right now, right? I think as we all, that kind of fear um, around the economy, we're all, we're all turning to, to community. So Josh, like for people who are sitting at home, who are maybe feeling a little bit isolated given the current corona situation, like what would you say to those people is like the key tip to building community when you move cities, move countries, when you're maybe isolated at home? Like what's something tangible that people can do um, to help build community? So I, I think it's honest, I mean, being honest is a really important part of it. I, I don't think you can pretend about the community that you're from and the community that you're trying to build. Me being an expat going to the US, I could build around exactly what I was doing. And I, I think, as, you know, as you said, especially in this time, you want to find that little niche of something that's just like you in a bigger situation. So if for me, it's people that have moved over in the greater US, that's kind of my niche. And I, I think it's, yeah, communicating a lot. It's making sure that you've got, you know, an honest portrayal of the information that you know and you've researched it and you, you aren't just simply there trying to, you know, sell a particular thing or you aren't trying to navigate everyone down one particular path. You're accommodating and you're welcoming and inviting. I think all of those elements, you know, especially in a time like now where people are freaking out, they're uncertain about what's going on outside and they want some comfort. They want to be able to trust someone I think that's the biggest thing. They, they don't, they're not looking for any particular sort of piece of advice. They're just looking for someone they can trust and someone they can look to in a time of good times and say, what a great recommendation for a restaurant, Josh. But then in the bad times, they can be like, you know, I, in my case, you know, coronavirus is impacting people legally. So they're wondering, you know, they've got crucial questions that are fundamental to their, their future, their lives. Um, and I think that's when they can look to you and, and trust you on the same level. So it doesn't really matter about the content. Right. It's the the trust and the confidence. And why do you think, like, why, what is it about community? It's funny because if we think about like humans and where we've evolved from, if you, um, if that's the, the, um, the premise that you believe, like, why do you think community is so important for us? And why at the moment in this time of uncertainty, why are we all kind of calling everyone who we haven't spoken to for 10 years? And like, if you go on Instagram right now, like for everyone who's joined us as well, like at the top, it's just like everyone's going live, right? Like everyone's sharing, everyone's connecting. I would imagine Instagram and Facebook have probably had, you know, their biggest spike in use in the last Highest two weeks. Highest engagements ever. 
Right. So like, what is it about community that you think is so important and why are we as humans craving it so much right now? Yeah, I, I mean, I think you're exactly right. I think we're all looking for something that's familiar. And I, I think when everything else gets scary, when it's everything else gets, you know, extra uncertain, extra unfamiliar, you're looking for the one little thing that you can narrow down on, sort of burrow in on and say, this is me, this is my core, you know, for a lot of people that do travel, again, I'll use examples that are relevant to my community, but the people that have come here, they do have the familiarity of their hometown. They've got the familiarity of their home country. That's their identity that they're, you know, really they, they narrow down on in a time where they don't know what else to look for. So they find that bit and they say, you know, I've got this little morsel that I can at least, I know that I'm confident of that. I'm not sure about the rest of the world. I'm not sure about the economy. I'm not sure about where my job might be. I'm not sure about anything else outside, but at least I've got that. And I, I think that's what we're seeing is, you know, the engagement on Facebook groups for, for us at the moment is growing outrageously fast because people are asking, you know, every hour, every day, there's a few different questions that are popping up and people are going, oh my God, what does this mean to me? And you can talk to that community that knows your background because they've all lived it before. They're all part of that same kind of collective, that same community. So I think all of those little moving pieces start to make it feel like you need to reach out. You need some community to talk to. Yeah. And suddenly you've got a nice base. Yeah. And it's really interesting. I mean, I, I, my, my background before I started pep talker, I was a journalist and I think what being a journalist really taught me was like the power of story. And I think that it's similar and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, but certainly for us at pep talker, when we've been building a community, it's really been about story. And I think you touched on this earlier, like the vulnerability and authenticity of each, each and everyone's individual story, right? Like everyone joining us now on the zoom live, everyone on the Instagram live, like, everyone right now has a story that's has different a to story. Me. it's different yep. to yours josh's like no one can replicate that right nothing no, nothing no one in the world is going to have the same story as you and what we found um at pep talker is that um actually sharing your experiences is really powerful for other people and that was kind of weird for me to start with because i was like oh but doesn't everyone like isn't this just what everyone goes through and what i did it's funny like i think you, you don't know what, like you're so in your own world that you forget that actually other people maybe are going through the same thing. Maybe you would really um, benefit from you telling that story or sharing that nugget of wisdom or that thing that you think is very normal. Like I know Josh, for example, with America, Josh, Josh is like a visa nerd. So if you've got a visa question, like <laughs> he's your guy, right? And so you probably think that that's really normal. But for me, I'm shocking at that stuff, right? And so it's so yeah. valuable for me for you to share that intel for me. Um, I get a lot of value out of that. And that makes me want to be a part of your community, right? Because I know similar to, you know, back in the olden days when, you know, um, humans used to sit around a campfire, it's kind of the same, th the same thing, right? I, I, I see yeah. community as like a campfire. And I think um, the fashion designer, Karen Walker, um, we both spoke at a Vogue event maybe 12 months ago now. And she uses that analogy of like community social media it's a campfire right like you're there to share you're not there to dictate you're not there to yell you're not there to sell you're there to share and like exchange information and i just love that yeah. analogy no and no, i think it's exactly right i think that collaborative nature and um, but i think for me when you talk about those stories and say how important they are i completely agree and i think the one thing that i've really learned quite quickly is that vulnerability is a big part of the story that i tell um, because people, nobody wants to be vulnerable. You know, I'm a, I'm 32 year old, uh, a 32 year old who moved over, you know, I'm, I'm confident. I know what I'm doing. I, I know the world. And I got to New York and my story is that I didn't know how to order a sandwich at a bodega. And it's, it's one of the most ridiculous stories ever. And it sounds outrageous, but you walk into a bodega. So for those of you who haven't been to New York corner store, deli kind of sandwich bar, I walked in and I, they sort of said, what do you want? And I'm standing there and thinking, I am a business owning, you know, I've, I've done things, I've, you know, and I don't know how to order a sandwich. And telling that story to people would immediately, their face would light up and they'd be like, oh my God, I went to uh, the Metro, like I was trying to catch the train and I, I couldn't work out how to do, you know, the, I was a whole line of people formed behind me and I didn't know how to scan my ticket. Or some, they're all different, but they're such sort of silly stories, but people gravitate towards them. As he said, it's like being around the campfire. It's like sitting there and saying, you know, 
oh my God, this thing happened today, or you know, I, I had a terrible day, or I, I just want to talk through something. You're not necessarily looking for someone to fix it. You just want to get it off your chest. And I, I think America Josh has certainly built on the fact that this idea that you're not going to be good at this. You can't move internationally and expect that you're going to land on your feet and just run. It, it's going to suck. Just, you know, a little bit of it, you know, you might like the bigger picture and, and on the whole, it's going to go really well, but there's going to be elements of it that you, you should detest and you'll be sad and you'll think, I'm no good at this. And having that community means that you can ask that question and say, hey, has anyone lived through this? and not have to reinvent the wheel every single time. And the content that I'm writing is very much, you know, I'll try to order a sandwich, get there and write the story of how I ordered a sandwich. There is an article, it was like the third one I wrote on how to, how to bodega, I think it's called. Uh, on it my is site, very which is all about when you how first to order New York, like bodegas are like, where do you even start? It's terrifying. They, there's no sign that says like, you could order, you know, what he asked me was, uh, do you want that on a hero? And a hero now, anyone that's lived in, I think it's only New York even, that's a big role, but that means absolutely nothing to, I'm thinking, you know, Spider-Man, Superman, like, no, I'll, I'll just stick to bread. Like, it, and it sounds ridiculous. And, but you look like, you, well, you feel like an idiot for a few seconds there and you realize you shouldn't have to feel like that. That's, you know, it's completely fair to be standing there in, unknown, in the unknown environment that you're in and say, I don't know. But this, I think that's where the community, you can say, I don't know, and you do feel comfortable because the other people in that community are probably in the same position. And you start to feel like you've got a teammate, you've got someone beside you. And it's trying to reinforce that. It's trying to make sure that all those people around in that community are getting that support. Another thing, I mean, again, for people who are sitting at home now, the whole reason we started these daily pep talks is because, you know, everyone's looking for some way to connect and kind of learn and keep interested during these working from home quarantine times. I'm interested to also understand like the, the power of community to actually build your business then, right? Because so obviously America Josh started out to kind of help people very altruistic, similarly to Pep Talker, like we're all about serving our community and creating a big impact. But what's interesting is that what's come from that, that sort of nugget of starting the community has actually led to what is now my full-time business and that employs, you know, four business, other people. Yeah. So yeah. can you just talk about like when, when, you're, when you grow a community and then you turn it into a business, like what are the benefits of having a strong community in then, you know, creating revenue essentially? Yeah, I think networking, um, I mean, we all know, I mean, we all kind of hate the word and we all hate the concept of like business networking. And But I think it is valuable. I, I moved from Adelaide, South Australia. So I moved from a, a relatively, well, a very small city in the grand scheme of things to a very big city. And having that network and those referral network, for example, uh, is in Adelaide essential because there aren't that many people to choose from. You need to know who to trust. And when I got to New York, I thought it would all be based on merits. You'd be, you know, straight up and down what your resume looks like, basically. And that's how you'd get jobs. But it turns out it's not. It's the community that you've built. It's the networks. It's the people you can talk to. Because the inverse is true. It's There are so many people in New York that you don't know who to trust. So it's the exact same problem as you have in a small town or a small city as you do in a big city. And I think once you build that community and you build that trust and people do see that you're vulnerable. So for me, business um, has always been about telling people where my shortcomings are. So it's, we do A, B, C really well, really, really well, but D we don't do. And it, it shocked me because when I got to New York, uh, that's not the language that people use when they do business here. And it's not the sort of language people use very much in general. They don't say they have vulnerabilities. They don't say they aren't, perfect they say you know whatever you want we'll take care of it and I I think we all know that can't be true you can't be perfect at everything and having that you know community support people that have seen when you aren't at your best or have seen you when you you know might be a little bit vulnerable or when you've got a problem you can segue that into saying now you've seen that you can trust me you've seen and it's genuine I'm you know it's not this is not some you know scam they you are genuinely genuinely giving up that information People can then say, well, hold on, now when we're talking about business or we're talking about some professional element, I'm willing to trust you. I'm willing to follow your recommendation. You know, and people now uh, will follow, you know, if I say I recommend Maggie for something, they'll say I trust Josh because based on, you know, the, the segue from the community that I was a part of to now the business that I'm involved with, I'm willing to trust 
and trust and trust and trust and it keeps sort of flowing on like that and I think that's something that only exists once you are part of something and once you've been sort of in the good times like I sort of said before with you know the coronavirus and everything that's going on at the moment these are the, the, the darker days the harder times when you've had someone through the good times and it was easy and you're still trusting them, now is the time you get to rely on them and you can sort of call on those networks and call on those trusts. And it's so interesting you bring up relationships during tough economic times. Sophie McNaught from The Shed said a very similar thing when we were talking about um, the session the other day, WTF is going on in the markets right now. Like how you treat people when times are tough in community, um, I think is really important. Um, but I like what you said as well, Josh, is that like when you're building a community, honesty and vulnerability is so powerful. And I think people are willing to forgive a lot as well when you kind of share those shortcomings. Um, Brené Brown, Absolutely. for anyone who's watching, anyone a Brené fan, send us an emoji or, or a comment on Zoom. Like she talks a lot about this, right? Like the, the, the necessity in this day and age to kind of share really quite um, openly, right? And sometimes it's genuinely to do that. Yeah. You know, no, I think it is. And I think we we want, you know, it's the interview question. It's, you know, what aren't you good at? And we we Google, <laughs> we look up what story to tell so that you look good. And sometimes, well, I mean, it's always very easy to see when people have done that. And having that genuine, you know, having people around in a community means that they see it by nature of just being a part of it, as opposed to you having to be prompted and tell a story. And sometimes it's better that they've been a part of it and they've seen it moment for moment as it happens and then they can engage with you and say like I saw when that happened and I saw how you dealt with that problem and now I'm willing to trust you I, I think it's it, you know it is really difficult to be vulnerable and in a market where it's going to get more difficult over the, the coming weeks and months I think it's going to get even more difficult because you don't want to show that you are vulnerable you don't want to show that you've got weaknesses but I, I think there's great value in doing that because it does show people that you're not perfect none of us are perfect we're all struggling in you know some way I'm having like you know I, I'm I've got food here and I I'm I'm happy but there are you know issues always in the background that I might be a little bit personally worried about or you know things that I'm always thinking about and I think having someone close to you having a network around that having a community around that can highlight that without having to actively do so yeah totally um if anyone has any questions feel free to send them through on Instagram live or in the zoom chat we've got a couple of minutes left um, I just wanted to talk quickly about um, the, the fact that you can build community in your personal life and also in your business life. So I know, um, well, frankly, Josh, you and I have a bit of a community where we, we, we are always messaging online, but then we try and catch up once a month for lunch. So I suppose we have like a we mini do. community, the two of us, um, <laughs> entrepreneurs in New York. But also, you know, and I've got um, a group on Facebook with about eight other um, women entrepreneurs and it's everything from like high five for that business deal to let me give you a hug. Um, you know, you went through a breakup, whatever it is. I think having that support point, network yeah. has been a godsend for me um, on many occasions. And what I'm noticing um, at Pep Talker is that a lot of clients that we're working with at the corporate level, they're also looking to build community too. Like, Telstra, um, like very nerdy and very specific, but they're, they're building community in New York around people in the telecom industry. And then like Salesforce, who's a big client of ours at, at Pep Talker, like they are building a very big community of women in sales, not with the intention of selling Salesforce products, but just with the intention of kind of like supporting and building community around Being a leader that. of community. Um, yeah. 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 And it's, it's really interesting that it's not just like us as individuals, it's businesses as well that are looking to build those communities so they can really help support it and pay it forward, which I find quite interesting. Yeah. And I, I think it's important. I, I think there is an element for it having to happen a little bit organically. I think that's something that I've seen some try to force it too much. And they say, you know, effectively, welcome to our family and you're all now just part of it. And that I don't think works. I think it does need to happen that, you know, find something that already exists, find that niche, find those groups and bring niche more people key, into them and right? say, like, yeah, 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 I think it's, yeah. Oh, I, oh, I sorry, niche. Just, we, should, we should say niche oh, for sorry, our American yeah. viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I think it's important. I think you can't just say to someone like, you know, we're building a community, you're now our newest member, because that doesn't give anyone the sense that they're actually part of anything. If they self-subscribe, if they're interested because they see some value, they see a tangible something that they can get an answer from, I think that's when people, you know, start to gravitate towards it. And so if you, you know, if you find someone and find a small group that you can answer a question, or if you find a small group that all have something in common and facilitate that, that can grow community inside a bigger community. And that 
or so inside a bigger group. And I, I think slowly but surely businesses can do it really effectively. And then people do have the, you know, something's been bad at work or if they want to talk to someone, they do have the, the people in their community around them to, to go to and to say, help, I, I need some yeah. assistance. But yeah, that, that can't be forced. Yeah, yeah. And we've ha we're having a couple of questions come through. No, I totally agree with it. That it has to be organic and it can't be forced. Um, two Aussies started a community called Like-Minded Bitches Drinking Wine. Excuse the language, but that's the name of the group. <laughs> when I joined that group, I think three and a half, four years ago, there was maybe 3,000 of us. I think there's now like 110,000 women globally who are in that yes. community. So it's pretty extraordinary. Cool. Um, and it, it goes to your point of, you know, it started organically and it started with a genuine purpose and kind of didn't feel forced. Ming's just got a question here about whether she should enhance community that exists already or should she start a new one? Um, which is a great question because there are a lot of Facebook mm. groups out there. There's a lot of Instagram accounts, there's a lot of businesses. I would say, I don't know about you, Josh, but I would say that like community takes time and you're not gonna build 110,000 women or men or whoever it is in your community overnight. Like that literally took them three or four years and that's astronomical, right? So I would say that like, if you're in it for the long haul, go for it. Um, but maybe start by enhancing another community. And then if you feel that it's lacking, you could start your own. What do you think? Yeah, I completely agree. I, in my opinion, I think the enhancing and working with other communities or adjacent networks and things is the, is the best way to do it. I very much for America, Josh, I've very much been gone in with the idea that supporting the things that already exist and being you know complementary to them is the best way i'm not trying to take over everything they do because they've probably got a niche that is slightly different to what i'm looking at and i think you can therefore be a part of it i, I think you do genuinely need to be a part of it and you need to uh, contribute to it and enhance it and then you might find that you've built a niche that is slightly different and you can then sort of say well hold on I'm going to build on this element of what I've now built and grow it because you, you don't necessarily need to start by walking in and saying, you know, I don't think anyone really wants someone to walk in and say like, I've now got a crew, you know, join this group. That's it. I think people want to say, you know, who the hell are you? Like, why should I trust you? And I think that comes from enhancing and building on a, on something that already exists. Love it. Well, we've got two minutes left. So I thought we'd wrap up with our top three tips for building community. I'm going to rattle off a couple of mine, Josh. And then I, I'd love you to close it off for us. Um, I reckon like the key thing is to have your own voice, um, to be really like clear in your tone of voice, because as I said, you are different to anyone else. Um, and so I think just own that. Like, that's what I think is really cool. I think com communicating and sometimes over communicating stuff that you think is boring is often very interesting to your community. And the other thing that I would say is taking this idea of give, give, get. So like giving to your community, giving, giving and not expecting in return immediately. I think it's really important to kind of build that trust um, in Good that patience. way. What, what would you say? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, realistically, I think it is finding that niche. I think it's finding, you know, a particular group, but then offering, we're in a sort of a, a lifetime at the moment where I can Google something and get 45 million results. And I, I think totally. some people or a lot of people and most people now just want to be told, what is the answer? Like it, it might not be the only answer and I get that, but what is your you know, preferred answer? And giving someone a simple step-by-step -step of, you know, here's the way to answer that. That's number one. Uh, I think, yeah, honesty is important. I think that's, you know, really crucial. And I think it's, uh, in addition to that, it's being present to curate. I think there are lots of loud voices that you'll find when you're building community and you'll find that some people are very quiet, but they're fantastic community members and you need to be there to moderate and, and sort of equivocate those two volumes and make sure that everyone in the community is being heard. Uh, and three, I've got a controversial one for my number three because I think it's don't always take criticism. So I, early on, you know, people would give me feedback and say, I didn't like ABC part of this dinner that I went to with you or, and where we sort of live in a, a world where you're meant to sort of do what you know, the customer's always right mentality. And I, I do think you need to listen to community members, don't get me wrong. But I do think there are some times where you can say, no, I, I believe in this idea for this community. I believe that this is the right way to do it. And I think we have this tendency, like when you're starting a small business, you want to uh, take on all the work you possibly can. You might take on things that aren't quite right for you. I think it's the same for the community. I think you might take on some people that, uh, aren't quite, uh, that aren't quite right for you. And it's okay to drop people from the community. And that sounds brutal, but I, I think it's no, I like okay that. to be, yeah. it's kind of okay to be like, you don't fit into my niche. And I think we want to be all inclusive and I think you should absolutely try, but sometimes you'll have to say like, 
I, I don't think this is working and it's I still believe in my my mission for my community so I think it's yeah you, you are allowed to be a little bit brazen a little bit confident about that you've got a good idea and listen to others but don't necessarily always bend to the will of everyone that contributes great advice that's a really interesting thing, actually. <laughs> and I think someone said to me the other day if you're doing it right not everyone's gonna like you and it's kind of a harsh thing to hear when you're building a community hello to all the pep talker trolls we've got quite a few um, <laughs> and apparently that's the way you know you've made it when people are trolling you leaving bad reviews on yep. the app store apparently that means you've made it. Who knew? <laughs> so um, no, and I, thank you for that yeah, great I advice Josh yeah, no, really appreciate it. Um, and thanks to everyone um, who's joined. If you've got any other questions, you can DM them to us on Instagram or send us an email, hello at peptalker.com, and we will come back to you um, virtually. But thanks for joining the Daily Pep Talk. Um, they're happening every day at the same time, 15, 20 minutes of interesting wisdom from interesting people. Thank you to America Josh for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. And um, we will be back tomorrow chatting all, I think, I just want to triple check. I think tomorrow is Cheetah from Success Bully, who's a total legend. And she's going to kick your ass into goal setting uh, in the time of Corona. So get excited about that. And um, we're looking forward to seeing you then. Thanks, Josh. Thank you very much, Maggie. Bye. Thanks, Bye.